time now for our news review bulletin for this hour. The United Nations has suspended the work of its torture inspectors in Australia after authorities prevented their access to several prisons. The inspectors called the decision drastic and a response to Australia's breach of its international obligations. A former inspector is also calling Australia's move an embarrassing debacle for which Canberra should be held accountable. Australia has until January 2023 to meet its obligations. A failure to do so could place Australia on the list of countries with significant human rights concerns. Rights groups have repeatedly accused Australia of abusing the rights of prisoners, especially Aboriginal communities in its detention centres and immigration compounds. Joining us for more on that is Tim Anderson, the, the director at the Centre for Counter Hegemonic Studies from Sydney, and also Tony Gosling, historian and investigative journalist from Auckland. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, Tim, if I can start with you. Why, in your opinion, is Australia failing to fulfil its international obligations over its uh, torture system? Well, um, as you alluded to in your introduction, there's a long history of abuses of Indigenous people and Indigenous children in this country. There have been major inquiries into the deaths in custody, into the kidnapping of children, um, and, uh, but the solutions have been very scarce. Now, this Convention on Torture, Australia is a state party to it and also to the optional protocol four years ago, which requires visits by the UN committee. That's exactly what's been happening here. But what, what has happened and what has caused the abortion of the, of the visit is that two of the states at least have refused access to these UN inspectors. And the UN inspectors, it's part of the protocol that they arrive unannounced. Now, the, the, these are state authorities. Um, the, the human rights obligations are on part of the federal government and the federal government in Australia has historically avoided conflicts with the states and tried to pretend it's not their responsibility. But of course it is. All of those things, if those instruments are signed internationally, the federal government should be enforcing them down to the state level. That's what it hasn't been doing that. Right. So, Tony, we know the number of Indigenous uh, Australian prisoners has continued to grow despite the, an overall reduction in the number of adult prisoners who are non-Indigenous. Uh, this increasing gap between the Indigenous and the non-Indigenous, I mean, these were the first people to arrive, the first race to arrive in the country before the colonized, colonizers arrived. Uh, how much has that got to do with it? Well, I think we need to call this out for what it is racism and uh, and the idea that uh, you know actually when the british first started colonizing australia uh, that many of the the um, aboriginals were for example hunted uh, with dogs and and packs of hunters hunted for them uh, it doesn't seem as if they've really learnt the lessons uh, look what's happened here is the new south wales premier Dominic Petret, uh, Petretret, I think his name is, um, plus uh, elsewhere, but particularly him. I mean, he's what he's saying uh, is that they're keeping to the high standards. Well, he's obviously lying, isn't he? Because he will not allow these inspectors to go and, and um, see these high standards in actions. What's been happening is that we've had Aboriginal deaths in custody, uh, things like the use of face shields forced onto people and masks to stop them spitting at people. Uh, and these are uh, not allowed. Uh, these are the sorts of things that are not allowed, particularly the deaths in custody of these Aboriginals. So there's quite obviously a rather nasty racist uh, um, element within those prisons, uh, something that uh, the New South Wales Premier is not prepared to deal with. And because he's not prepared to deal with it, he doesn't want to deal with it, uh, he's, he's shaming his entire country and, and then lying, saying that we keep to the high standards when it's quite clear and obvious that he doesn't. I mean, in fact, even some civil servants within Australia itself uh, have been saying that the facilities in the country don't meet their own standards. So uh, that's actually the Inspector of Custodial Services in Australia has said that. So it's quite clear that Australia has a rather bad uh, 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 you know, racist problem uh, going on within its prisons. So uh, I would suggest that what may well be happening here is some of the prison officers are being recruited who are actually racists, and that whole uh, problem is not being dealt with properly.
Tim, one former UN uh, inspector says that Canberra should be held accountable. You know, if this type of condemnation from the United Nations were to take place against American and European adversaries, we've seen the type of punitive measures that would be imposed against those countries. Do you expect any punitive measures to be imposed against Australia? Well, this is a body, a UN body, which doesn't have those sorts of powers. But Australia is in a very, very similar situation to Canada in many respects. They both have um, preached um, human rights. They've even gone and bombed people in other countries in the name of human rights. But when it comes to the rights of Indigenous people and vulnerable people here, there's been huge crimes and crimes that have been covered up for many, many years. So I think it's really the shame that's going to come to Australia, who that very few, very few countries have failed in their obligations to allow these UN inspectors to go in and look at the prisons uh, candidly, unannounced. That's part of their part of their job is to go in unannounced so they can see what's going on rather than a show being set up for them. But this is one of those countries uh, that I live in, and unfortunately, uh, that is is saying where. We're not going to do. We're not going to do that. We'll preach human rights to the rest of the world, but when it comes to you and inspection of our own uh, vulnerable groups, we won't allow it. Right, and, and then Tony, just expanding on an earlier point that you raised, an interesting point over racism, as we've seen in Canada and uh, that country's attempt to wipe out to the indigenous population. Do you think this is the same here in Australia? No, I don't think it's that they're trying to wipe out the population. Um, I, I think, I mean, obviously that was something which happened uh, back when, when Australia, hundreds of years ago, when it was originally colonised, there were attempts to, and of course that happened in the Americas too, with the European colonisation. But what, I think what we've seen is the, uh, the, the, the sort of white supremacist attitude that, the, that uh, Indigenous people are a, a sort of underclass and they are uh, othering them. So they, in other words, they're nothing like us, they're something completely different. Uh, this is, co of course, totally in contrast with Australia's, uh, you know, official policies, but the, these things, uh, you know, are very, it's all very easy to trumpet this stuff from the rooftops and say how important they think Indigenous culture is, and maybe, you know, the uh, things like the, uh, the didgeridoos and the, the symbols of, Aust of Australian Indigenous culture, uh, but, but actually, when it comes down to it, they're not dealing with this in their own country. Uh, I think the the answer, the, the, the result of all of this is that uh, you, what you get, and we've got this to a certain extent uh, uh, back in the UK uh, uh, as well, uh, is that you get prisoners that when they're released, are if they're still alive, because there are deaths in custody of these uh, 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 Indigenous people, it, when they're released, finally, uh, they're, they're actually often in a worse state than when they were incarcerated. So the entire purpose of them being put inside into a, into a jail is completely lost and wasted because they found uh, an even bigger, deeper resentment against uh, the authorities when they leave jail. Uh, and, and these individuals, uh, as we know, many in the Western world, uh, uh, particularly in Britain, United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, uh, maybe New Zealand not quite so much, I'm not sure, but uh, in many of these countries, the, the premiers are, uh, they're kind of, what should we say, supremacist, globalist. They are actually real egotists, and they're not in it because they're good at their job. They're in it for their own ego. And I think uh, Dominic Perotet is one of those who who likes to uh, you know think of himself as a, a very important international chap, but when it actually comes down to running and managing uh, a humane society. He's just simply not able. He he should actually, I think, be told uh, by by the uh, Australian Prime Minister to, to allow these inspectors in uh, to prove what he says. As he, he's saying there, uh, they have the highest standards in their prisons. Uh, let then, what on earth is the point in stopping these inspectors going going through them? And then, Tim, just finally, uh, your thoughts. I mean, wh why this racist nature towards the indigenous people of the land in countries such as Australia, in Canada, in the United States? It's a very deep-rooted thing, a deep-rooted cultural thing. And it's to do with the history of uh, dispossession of the land. There are still major, major land disputes and uh, disputes about the sovereignty of this country. There was never any treaty with indigenous people here. So there's a, and, and there's a culture of resistance to 
the school system, the education system, the policing system, and that results in the fact that we have something like 10 to 15 times the population in prison of Indigenous people compared to any other ethnic group. There's no other ethnic group that comes close. So there is this long history and a, and a long failure of um, you know, nice words, but a failure to do anything practically about it. And let's not forget here, the responsibility does lie with the federal government here. It lies with the Labor government led by the Prime Minister Albanese. He should be the one that's enforcing these, um, these uh, scrutiny of the state institutions. But he's weak. He doesn't want to have a fight with the states. And so he'll stay away from it and say, well, it's not our problem and it's not good enough. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts. Let me thank our guests for their contribution. Tim Anderson is the director at the Centre for Counter Hegemonic Studies, joining us from Sydney. Tony Gosling is a historian and investigative journalist from Auckland. Tony, are you in Auckland or we normally see you in, in Bristol? Yeah, that's right. I'm in uh, New Zealand at the moment um, for the next month or so. OK, have a safe trip, trip there, Tony. Thank you very much Thanks. indeed. That brings an end to uh, this hour's uh, news review.